very warm welcome to our service this morning. As we stand, we sing our opening hymn, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. To whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ who has sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. 
Therefore, let us confess our sins. <coughs> Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we stand to sing God's praise in the glory. you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. says this, for Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until their vindication shines out like the dawn, and their salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be crowned in beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem 
in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith, by the same Spirit, to other another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another of discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we stand now to sing our gradual hymn, I Come With Joy, a Child of God. As you're able, please stand.
When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine, and Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he told you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So, the but so they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called to the bridegroom and said, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the, good, after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the glory of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> Let's bow our heads to pray. So now may I speak, and may we hear, in the name of the living God of love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things we often forget about Jesus is the reputation he had as a party goer. The Pharisees were often criticizing him for partying with tax collectors and sinners, even accusing him at one point of being a glutton and a drunkard. And here in John's Gospel, Jesus' public ministry gets off to a pretty extraordinary start. Because the first miracle that Jesus performs is not something respectable like healing the sick or restoring sight to the blind. No, it's the frankly outrageous act of turning six huge stone jars of water into the equivalent of around a thousand bottles of top quality wine. Just stop and think about that for a moment. Now, I don't know what your view of Jesus is, or what view of God you brought with you to church today. But I think I can safely say that this is not a central part of most people's picture of God. Yet as far as John is concerned, this is the first thing he wants us to get hold of in the story he is telling us about Jesus. So let's pause for a moment and think what this episode is all about. <coughs> Jesus and his disciples have been invited to a wedding not far from Jesus' home in Nazareth. As the party goes on, the wine begins to run out. And there was no off-license or supermarket just across the road to nip out for a few more bottles, whatever may have happened in Downing <laughs> Then, Jesus' mother Mary asks him to become involved. And as a result, this episode becomes a crucial turning point in Jesus' life. In fact, in John's telling of the Gospel, it becomes the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. I think that is, in part, John's way of hinting at the role of Mary. She is the human means of bringing Jesus into the world and now onto the public stage of God's plan for humanity. It 
to nod, if you like, to the nativity story that we read in the other Gospels, in Matthew and Luke. You see, up to now, in John's Gospel, Jesus has acted essentially privately, just gathering a few disciples around him, as John recounts in chapter 1. But with this incident, Jesus turns to the public realm. And immediately afterwards, he would go into the temple courts and drive out the money changers. John is telling us that Jesus is about to step on to the public stage. And his intervention in the wedding at Cana is how he chose to do it. And it's all the more significant because of that. So what about the meaning of the incident itself? What conclusions does John intend us to draw from it? Well, most importantly, this miracle tells us about the nature of God's dealings with us in Jesus. Remember that what Jesus does here is to create an extraordinary, quite ridiculous quantity of the finest wine when the ordinary wine has run out in the middle of the wedding feast. It's a wonderful, ridiculous thing to do. It's an act of utter grace and generosity. The story is in part a parable of the failure of the old covenant between God and his people. The law of Moses had failed to sustain the people in their relationship with God. The old red religion was exhausted and dead. Jesus breaks into this situation in this glorious gesture and shows that he himself is the source of abundant grace. It is a sign the coming of God's kingdom and a revelation of God's glory seen in Jesus. And what John is saying here is that this is how God deals with us in Jesus. Not on the old basis of the law, but on the new basis of grace. And the provision of this huge quantity of new wine is also a symbol of the gift of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus will bestow on his disciples. The event is an echo of the prophecy of Joel and a foretaste of the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit will be poured out freely on all people. It's John's way of foreshadowing the gift of the Spirit at Pentecost, a whole new beginning for humanity's relationship with God, which we saw also foreshadowed and echoed in that first reading that we heard from the prophet Isaiah. From now on, says John, this will be the foundation stone, this must be the foundation stone of our view of God and of how he relates his generosity to us and his love for us are as abundant and ridiculous as this. Here we are given in this one little story a new vision of the character of God. It's this fundamental message of grace that each of us needs to hear and that we need to let permeate the whole life of the church that God wants to pour out the new wine of his kingdom into our lives by his Spirit. Each and every one of us needs to hear this wonderful story of the generosity of God and to receive and respond to its message for ourselves. Wherever we are on our spiritual journey, we need to hear and receive the message of God's grace for ourselves once more, right here, today, after all that's happened over these last two difficult years. John is saying to us, the generosity of God 
is revealed in Jesus. What Jesus did at the wedding in Cana is a picture of how God wants to deal with us and of the abundant way in which he wants to pour his spirit into our lives and into the life of the church. Have we grasped that for ourselves? Or do we still perhaps carry within us some other view of God? Perhaps as some kind of a mean-spirited celestial headmaster, rather than a master of the banquet and the feast. God's greatest gift to each of us is Jesus himself. To receive him as Lord is to begin a new and living relationship with God, one in which we can begin to discover his generosity for ourselves. So what does that mean for us? And especially for you as a church, as the family of God in this place, we all know these last two years have been pretty exhausting for all of us with the coronavirus crisis and even more so for you as a parish with Debbie having been off work so much as well. All these things can leave us feeling a bit fed up and understandably maybe even a little negative about the whole situation. Well, the message of this passage is that God longs to fill us to overflowing with the new wine of his kingdom. He wants to bind up our aching hearts. He wants to renew our spirits and to teach us, yes, to, to party with him once more. For all who are still in January, the dark days of winter are passing. The days are beginning to get a little longer. And it's time now to prepare for God's springtime. Once more to break into the life of the church. We need to look forward. Forward to the coming of Easter. And ask God to refresh us and enable us to become the joyful, hopeful people we are meant to be in preparation for the new things he wants to do among us as we come out the other side of this dreadful pandemic. Just think of it. A thousand extra bottles of wine for a village wedding party. These have been a very difficult two years, but the time has come to drink afresh of God's great generosity and to enjoy the amazing gift of his spirit in preparation for the new things that God has in store for us all. As you are able, please, will you stand? <coughs> As we celebrate our faith in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us sit for our prayers of intercession.
Merciful Father, accept his prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As you are able, please, will you stand for the peace? There is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a suitably socially distanced sign of peace. Peace be with you. We stand and prepare to come to the Lord's table. We're going to sing now our offertory hymn, Restore, O Lord, the honour of your name. Accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift 
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made presence in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nation. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned into riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new cup which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. <coughs> Great is the mystery of prayer. perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. holy gifts for God's holy Jesus Christ is holy Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father draw near with faith receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith, with thanksgiving.
God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. So we stand to sing our final hymn, The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Please be seated for the notices. A um, few notices, but I'll try to keep them as brief as possible. Um, many thanks to, to Bishop Jonathan for me and for Duncan Elsa. It's really, really changed me. Really like the sermon this morning. Very apt. Good to remember that Jesus was a bit of a party goer. Uh, very many thanks to Brian and his sons in law for clearing the remainder of the Christmas decorations. Uh, there's a communion service on Wednesday at 10 o'clock, which I think will be with Robert, is that right? Um, there's new rotors for the sight people, counting and cleaning are available. There's also rotors for readings, and on the reading rotors, I've also added on the people who will take um, wine on behalf of the congregation. So please have a look at the back of those. Um, if anybody wants to join any of the teams, please let 
Um, John or Diane know because those rotors can be changed to make sure you're able to take part. PCC meets tomorrow. Um, if there's anything desperate that anybody wants to kind of add to the agenda, please have a word with John. Um, can I make an appeal on behalf of Dewsbury South Community Group? They're the ones that do the um, gifts for people who need shopping. Um, it would be lovely if you can start bringing things in and putting them in the baskets. Um, we'd really appreciate that because people at this time of year obviously need food and you know there's a lot of people who are suffering out there without. Uh, fire practice on this coming um, Wednesday. Um, all this is on your cue sheet. Uh, just to plug for Whitley, there's Burns Night, um, which is taking place, I think, a week on Friday. It looks like there's a quiz and a supper, which looks to be good fun. Uh, just a quick reminder as well that we have Christian meditation here each Monday evening at 6 o'clock. I, I understand that this is really helpful to people and can be very peaceful. So if you're interested in that, 5 pardon? 5 Thank you, Jill. 5.30. Meditation. Meditation. So just to let you know about that. Um, and I think that's all our notices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. It's lovely to be with you. And I think we can be clear the wedding at Cana was not a work event. <laughs> <laughs> Please stand as you're able for the blessing. Christ our Lord, to whom kings bow down in worship and offer gifts, reveal to you his glory, and pour upon you the riches of his grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ.